Hello everyone, this is question number one and in, from this video we will start UGC NET December 2021 and June 2022. This is a merge cycle of UGC NET exam and we will solve the paper one video in this series. So the question number one states that which of the following are sources of data and historical research. So this question is asked about the historical research and what type of data and what are the sources which we used in historical research is. So in the terms of the definition of historical research is historical research is a process of investigating and studying the past events events about and the people and societies using a variety of sources and methods. So this type of research is basically aims to reconstruct and interpret the past based on the available evidence. So what kind of sources we have when we talk about the historical research. So first is personal observation as we all know that personal observation is used in the research where we are taking the current data and we think the how a person react and how much that person is observed in various scenario. Second, so option A is not the correct option, which, which is not a right option that should not be included. So in which the, the option contain the statement A will be eliminate that. So option A and option B will be eliminated. So option B says that focused group discussion. Again, this is the same theory when we are making the people's group in any research and we are observing their behavior on various events which has been occurred. So during that research time, so the reactions of the people or the reaction of the participants or group leader take the observation of these so it will not anyhow related with the historical research only so we can eliminate the option b as well so remaining are the oral testimony relics and acutarius so these are the three major sources which we have used in historical research so we can say that option c d is right and on the basis of that we can say that option number d here C, D, which contain the C, D, E will be the correct option for this question. So let's take a brief about the what are the types of historical research we have. So we have the historical research here, kind of descriptive research. We have the analytical research, comparative, interpretive and quantitative and qualitative research as well. So the correct option for this question is option number D. And these are the three sources which we usually used to collect the data in historical research. Hello everyone, this is question number second. In this question, given below two statements, one is labeled as assertion A and other is labeled as reason R. So we have given two statement here. Statement A is assertion A, which states that discussion forms are one of the four quadrants of MOOC. And the reason R says that discussion form are inbuilt features of learning management system. So there has been used two different terms. One is MOOC, another one is LMS. So MOOC stand for massive open online courses. And these are the quadrants here. As you can see, these are the four quadrants which are uh, in the, we can say in the MOOC, like massive open online courses having basically four quadrants. In quadrant one contains e-tutorials, quadrant two contains the e-content in which e-book, text, self-instruction materials, case studies as well. And quadrant three contains the supplementary reading, related links, Wi-Fi, glossary, open content and in the internet. And last quadrant fourth contains the self-assessment like MCQ, quizzes, assignment solutions, discussion forms here. So in the question they have asked about this discussion forms. So as you can see that discussion form are one of the four quadrant of MOOC. So statement one or we can say assertion A is correct. So the option in which we have the assertion A incorrect, we can eliminate that. So so that option D can eliminate here A is not correct. So we can do that and next is uh, we have the reason here. So basically we have to find out that whether this reason is the correct explanation for this assertion or not. As we can see that LMS is not related with the MOOC. It is a different system which is a different thing and discussion form are not inbuilt feature of LMS which is not the correct explanation for this assertion. So we can see that statement one which is the assertion here is discussion form as we also verify it from this diagram that discussion form is yes it is one of the quadrant comes under the MOOC but the second reason which is not the correct explanation for this assertion so we can say the correct option for this question will be option number B that uh, the assertion R is not the correct explanation for A 
Hello everyone, this is the third question. This question belongs from higher education and this is a very easy and memory based question in which they have asked that which educational institution was first to start college classes for women. So here four options has been given and different schools and college name has been listed here. One is the Central Hindu Girls College, Vasanta College, Miranda House and Bethune School of Girls. So the correct option for this question will be Bethune School of Girls, although this is a memory based question. So we must know the what are the uh, Bethune School uh, for Girls which uh, established in 1879 and Bethune College is a women's college located in Bidhan Sarari in Kolkata, India and affiliated to the University of Calcutta. So it is the oldest women college in India. It was established as a girls school in 1849 and as a college in 1879. So they has been asked that which college classes for women. So first to start the college classes for women was the Bethune School of Girls. So the correct option for this question will be option number D. Hello everyone, this is question number four. And which of the following are the actions of an ethnographic researcher? Here, one type of research they were asking about ethnographic research. So ethnographic research is a qualitative research method that describe how a group of people live and experience life in their own environment. You can read more about ethnographic research from this paragraph. So what they are asking about that, which of the following are the actions which performed in ethnographic researcher. So what are the actions which are performed by the ethnographic researcher in ethnographic research here? So first is A which says that he gets immersed in the social setting. So immersed meaning is in which one involves oneself deeply in a particular activity we can say and which is very good for any research where researcher is deeply immersed in his or her work. So option A will be the correct option here so the one who is not containing this option a we can eliminate that one so option number c and d we can eliminate directly over here so next b says that he avoids collecting documents about the group members he is researching upon why would he avoid because he need for his research to collect the documents which contains the information about the group members he is researching upon. So option B must be there and the one which is exclude this will be the in incorrect option. So let's understand the other as well. He observes the behavior of group members. Yes, the researcher will observe the group behaviors. He listens to their conversation. Yes, he or she will gonna listen the conversation. Second, uh, the E states that he does not interview the participants when they are not amenable to observation. Here, we need to understand the meaning of amenable is what? Amenable is basically the person which uh, who is always open for the suggestions like a manable is the one who is open to influence or we can say control or who or she or he is willing to agree on it or in layman terms we can say the person who is easily controllable we can influence that person so in the statement e states that he does not interview the participants when they are not amenable. So there the correct statement would be he does interview the person who is not amenable. But what they said that he does not interview. So the statement was contain E we can eliminate that although there is not option which uh, contain the E but this statement is also false. He listened to their conversation which is very true the statement which contains the D is the right option. So the correct option for this question will be option number B here. A C and D will be the right option. Hello everyone, this is question number five. This questions belong from research methodology. Two statement has been given in this question, statement one and statement two. Statement one states that non-probability samples use available respondents and no specific selection procedure is followed. Statement two states that it is a fact that non-probability samples accurately reflect the population characteristics. So as you can observe that in both the statement one term is very common which is non-probability samples. 
when we are uh, taking the samples in our research there are two kinds of samples one is probability another one is non probability so they are asking about the non probability sample and we have to identify whether these two statements are true or false one is true another is false and vice versa so in the light of the above statement we have to choose the correct options which is given below so what is the probability sampling here so probability samplings you randomly select the participants for your research from the population with every participants having an equal chance of being selected i'm talking about here probability sampling where every participant uh, in the population having the equal prob probability of selecting whereas in non probability sampling you choose non random criteria upon which to base your sampling choices from a larger population in short in probability everyone having the equal probability of selecting from the population whereas in non probability sampling everyone having not the equal probability of selection so what are the various type in non probability sampling has been shown in this picture one type is convenience sampling which one is the nearest population we have to reach that and take those as the sample here next is purposive sampling where we are choose on the basis of our purpose we need one type of people from the population we select those people in our research next one is the quota sampling we divide the population in various quota and on the basis of these quota we take few members from each quota in our quota sampling whereas in snowball sampling we are taking the population over as a whole and take the everyone with the uh, on the basis of various parameters. meters like take one from the each area and so on so non probability sampling is here where everyone is not having the equal probability whereas in statement 1 which state that no specific selection procedure is followed yes there is no specific selection procedure is followed in terms of non probability sampling in it is a fact that non probability sampling accurately reflects the population characteristics no they are not dealing with the population characteristics they are not because in terms in the convenience sampling as you can say here the observer or researcher is not take the characteristics of the each population sample he just take on the basis of convenience from the part of the population he just took because it's on the basis of the convenience over here so statement 1 is seems to be true whereas statement 2 is seems to be false so the correct option for this question will be option number 3 where statement 1 is true and 2 is false hello everyone this is question number 6 this questions belong from logical reasoning from validity of argument topic the question state that if the statement statement is all women are honest is given as true which of the following propositions can be inferred from it so we can determine these statements from this statement or not so statements are all women are honest we can represent honest with this and women with this and the statement says that all women are honest so we can represent this like this this is the honest and this is the women so it represent that all women which are present here are the honest women so statement 1 says that no woman is honest is false when at first place we are saying that all women are honest and the second statement we are saying that no woman is honest is false so we can say this statement is true because no woman is honest we are saying that this is false statement and we are already saying that all women are honest which is is true which is given in the Uh, question itself so no woman is honest this statement is obviously is false and we can choose this because in the later on we have to identify the correct answers and the correct statement from this given option so the statement uh, so the option which does not contain option a we can eliminate that so we can easily eliminate the rest of the statement rest of the options here so the correct option for this question will be option number a but just left for the sake of more clarification let's read the others as well some women are honest is true when 100 women and all women is included here in 100 women and we are saying that all 100 women are honest and at times at sometimes i am saying that 50 women are honest so both the statements are true likewise i am saying that all women are honest and later on i am saying that one women are uh, some women are honest which is also true so the statement b is also true 
next statement says that no woman is honest is undetermined no it is determined so statement c is false here so statement d says that some women are not honest which is false yes because at first place we are saying that all women are honest there is no chance that a single woman is not honest so statement d will be false here because it is given that it is false if it's saying that some women are not honest is true so we can say this is the false but in the question they are saying that some women are not honest is false so we state it as the correct so the correct option for this question will be option number a hello everyone this is question number seven this question belong from reasoning from number series topic a series has been given and we need to identify which term is wrong so here's series is 6 11 18 27 34 51 66 and 60 and 83 so we need to identify that which term is incorrect here and in order to answer this question we must understand the pattern of this series in order to find out the answer we need to check what which pattern this series follows so the difference between 11 and 6 is 5 difference between 18 and 11 is 7 difference between 27 and 18 is 9 so you as you can see the pattern of this 5 7 9 so we can observe that next term would be 11 so the difference between 34 and 27 must be 11 but here is 34 instead of 34 there must be 38 number so the difference between 38 and 27 is 11 difference between 51 and 38 is 13 and next term would be 15 which is directly the difference between 66 and 51 and the difference between 83 and 66 is 17 so we can clearly observe here is the incorrect term in this series is 34 hence the correct option for this question will be option number a hello everyone this is question number eight this questions belong to environment the question state that geothermal field requires combination of the following three conditions we have to identify those three conditions which is the required in geothermal field so five statement has been given the five conditions is there a b c d e and we have to identify the three conditions which contains uh, or which can we can say the required condition or combination for the geothermal field here so basically what is a geothermal field or geothermal energy we could say that geothermal energy is the thermal energy in the earth's crust which originates from the formation of the planet and from the radioactive decay of materials day by day we are trying to find out the different source of energy from our earth so geothermal energy is one of the source which we get energy from the crust of the earth where which originate from the formation of the planet the definition is written here so we need to identify the three conditions here the first condition states that a natural underground source of water of course we need that because when we dig up in the uh, earth we somehow get the water as you can see in the picture as well there is a statement called water flow is here so as you can see there is the water flow under the earth and there are above that there is impermeable cap rock or we can say simply cap rock is here and in the last we have the impermeable bedrock in the last we have the magma or the source of the heat and from this source we are getting the energy so first is statement a is very true that in natural underground source of water we get and this is a one of the required a thing uh, in order to get the thermal energy geothermal energy so the option which is does not contain the option a the statement a we can exclude that so simply we can eliminate the option c and d here now let's check the another one a mountain in the vicinity an impermeable layer a coal mine in the vicinity and a large mass of hot rock in the vicinity did you observe that vicinity is a common here vicinity is not a technical term here basically which uh, vicinity basic meaning is the surrounding area 
we can say the surrounding area in the geothermal plant or we can say in geothermal field vicinity is just the surrounding area so which the next thing we required here as you observe the remaining two options one option is very common which is c an impermeable layer so we can eliminate that or we can just ignore this c option somehow is very true because we have remaining two options left and c is in the both the options so let's check the another option here the p is not so we need not to check this p because b does not include in any one of the options so we can also ignore that just check the last d and e d states that a coal mine in the vicinity and e states that a large mass of hot rock in the vicinity when we are digging up in the earth we got some water and when we are more dig up in the earth and we get the this impermeable area or we can say so the it is what is that impermeable rock so the preamble rock is we can say a type of rock so uh, did you see that preamble rock here so this preamble rock is type of rock that has the pores or the empty spaces this uh, that the linked allowed and the fluids just like the water we can flow like this so the water which is under the earth and just right above this this preamble rock and having the pores here in the preamble rock having the pores in which which helps to uh, like the flow of water the pa uh, water can pass through it so this is a very important aspect in the geothermal field which we must include here so the option uh, e is the right here so the option which contain the e would be our right answer so the correct option for this question will be option number a the statement a and c and e will be the correct here hello everyone this is question number 9 this question is also from the reasoning two statement has been given one and two statement one states that aristotelian syllogism regards deduction and inductions are inseparably related statement two states that the nyay school of classical indian philosophy regards deduction and induction as two aspects of the same process so what does that mean the induction and deduction terms has been used in both the statement induction means in the learning when we learn from specific to general that comes into the induction we can say from specific to general when we observe a thing from the specific aspects and come in the conclusion to generalize this this statement is called the induction and what does the deduction means when we are start to learn a thing from general and to make it the specific so this is the meaning of induction and deduction here Aristotelian syllogism means Aristotle gave some syllogism here. So who is Aristotle? Aristotle is the ancient Greek philosopher, which gives the several statements regarding the deductive reasoning. He did not say anything about the, or we can say which somehow related with the induction. So uh, two premises is here. Premises one states that all men are mortal, and the second statement says that Socrates is a man. so therefore we can come to the conclusion on the basis of this premises that the socrates is mortal here so this is comes under the deductive reasoning which aristotle has talked about so deduction and inductions are not related with each other so we can say that statement 1 is false here let's read the another statement here the nyay school of classical indian philosophy which is regard for deduction and deduction it states that these are the two aspects for the same process you cannot directly answer such questions you must know the information about these terms that has been used in the question and what exactly they are trying to know so the in the statement two statement is given and multiple things has been used like who is aristotle you should know about it what is the induction and deduction terms means and what uh, what is the nyay school over here i have write some description about this so nyay philosophy states that nothing is acceptable unless it is accordance with reason there must be some reason for anything which has happened and experience and this comes under scientific approach so nyay is considered as a technique of the logical thinking nyay sutra says that there are four meaning of attaining valid knowledge and what are they first is perception second one is inference third is comparison and the fourth one is the verbal testimony 
सो द स्टेटमेंट टू इज द न्याय स्कूल ऑफ क्लासिकल इंडियन फिलोसफी विच इज ट्रू बट स्टेटमेंट वन इज फॉल्स सो स्टेटमेंट टू इज ट्रू एंड स्टेटमेंट वन इज फॉल्स द करेक्ट ऑप्शन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी ऑप्शन नंबर डी Hello everyone. This is question number ten. This question belongs to environment. Two statement has been given. Statement one and two. Statement one states that volatile organic chemicals (VOCs) are among the most commonly found contaminants in groundwater. No, VOC VOC are among the most commonly found contaminants which found usually in surface water, not in groundwater. So statement one is false here. Let's read the another statement. Statement two states that the concentration of VOCs in groundwater is much less compared to that in surface water. Yes, it is true because the content, the concentration or the amount of the VOCs which present in the surface water is maximum than that in the groundwater. So statement two is true here. so what is the ground water and surface water is surface water is usually as you can see in the picture this is called the surface water in the lake or in the pond we found the water that water is called the surface water and the water we usually found under the uh, like the uh, under the earth or we can say the ground water that uh, saturates the soil or under the sand and under the rock we found the water that water is called the ground water so this is the ground water here and this is the surface water surface water on the surface of the earth such as the streams or the lakes we have and then ground water water that saturates soil sand and rock beds or supplying springs and wells this is the ground water so the voc is maximum amount of VOC is present on the surface water, not in the ground water. So let's read the some more details about the VOCs. The group of the VOCs most frequently detected in ground water was THMS, which is not that much in the uh, ground water at the initial level. When we are talk about the VOCs, which is most commonly found in the the contaminants in the surface water than that the ground water, but what exactly which con uh, concentration of which contaminant found in the ground water that is THMS and one of the THMS like chloroform was the most commonly detected THMS form when chlorine interact with the dissolved organic matter in water which basically dissolved in the form of the dissolved which happened in the water which can happen when chlorine is added to drinking water for the disinfection of the bacteria this is the uh, added details about this VOCs over here although the correct option for this question will be option number d because our statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true related to the vocs hello everyone this is question number 11 this question belongs to ict topic which of the following statements are correct regarding cert hash n so cert in cert stands for computer emergency response team so uh, we have to identify from the given three statements which are statements are correct and which is not statement a says that cert in is the national nodal agency for responding to computer security incidents as and when they occur just by looking at the full form of cert we have shown that computer emergency response time is somehow related to the computer security or the computer times so cert is basically is an operational since january 2004 its constituency of cert in is an indian cyber community cert does, uh, in in the national nodal agency for responding to computer security incidents as and when they occur so i have taken this information from the official website of cert you may also check that and cert operational start from the 2004 from 2004 and in the second statement they are saying that cert operational since january 2014 which is incorrect so the option which contain the statement b we can eliminate those so option b option a and option d we can directly eliminate that you can answer such question if you have information about these terms you cannot directly you know make judge over the these statements like a would be correct or b would be incorrect you have to proper information about these terms so the option c state that forecast and alert of cyber security incidents is one of the function of cert which is very true that the forecasting that when this this crime is happened or how the cyber security is having loopholes is there some 
something like that so we have to identify whether a computer network or entire system is fully secured or if anything happens like if a hacker is hacked and when and how there is a loophole in the network or which data has been stolen so everything is need to check in this CERT so these are the basic cyber security functions here collection analysis and dissemination of the information on cyber incidents forecast and alert of the cyber security emergency measures coordination of cyber incidents issue guidelines or advisory to the people and such other functions related to the cyber security as may be prescribed so the correct option for this question will be option number C A and C statement is correct here hello everyone this is question number 12 this questions belong from teaching aptitude the question states that responses to open-ended questions are so what type of responses a student given in the open-ended questions so options are quantifiable realistic subjective imitative so here what is open-ended question so open-ended question is a question that cannot be answered with yes or no basically open-ended questions are not the question in which we could answer in one word so whether that questions is not like true false kind of or like one word kind of so open-ended questions are basically uh, on the based on the theory or we can say in which a student have to explain the terms in the theory part or we can say as the subjective so in layman term we can say there are two kinds of exam one is objective another one is subjective in objective usually we have four options a b c and d and we have to answer one option as a answer but in in terms of the subjective we have to write everything about the questions in our answer sheet so they, these type of questions are called the open-ended questions or with the static response open-ended questions are phrased as a statement that require a longer response as I'm saying that students need to elaborate each and everything about the terms which has been asked in the questions the response can be compared to information that is already known to the questioner so open-ended question we can say the correct option for this question will be subjective open-ended questions are subjective hello everyone this is question number 13 this questions belong to communication two statement has been given and we have to identify whether these statements are true or false one is true another is false and vice versa so statement one states that in symbolic communication power operates through images so in symbolic communication we used symbols we use images we use gesture to convey the information so this refers to the process of people using symbols like words we have used basically symbols in order to convey our messages and gesture and images to convey the information or express the thoughts feelings ideas beliefs to other people for example if a person using sign language or an artist creating a piece of art with a particular symbolic meaning are both using symbolic communication so here images plays a very important role in symbolic communication to convey the information to the others so it about how messages transmitted using symbolic means so in the order of these uh, understanding by these uh, paragraph or by these information we conclude that yes we use sim images and gesture and words in symbolic communication to express our feelings and express our thoughts so statement one seems to be true here so in the options given here in which statement one is false we can directly eliminate those options so here option b and option uh, d could be eliminate because in which options one states is false while, while uh, statement one is true so let's read this statement two. statement two states that such an advantage of exercising power does not exist in other types of communication no the other type of communication is also include such thing like in when we are using communication with the help of writing letters we use several kind of letters or we are using images or we are using the text or video audio and any kind of communication in which we are using here so it does exist so statement 2 is seems to be false here so the correct option for this question will be option number c whereas statement 1 is true and statement uh, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false here so the correct option for this question will be option number C 
Hello everyone, this is question number 14. This question belong to higher education. In order to develop students holistically, a teacher should emphasize on. So they are talking about the holistic education. Four options has been given and we need to tell that which option is correct. That which option is contain the parameter in which a teacher should emphasize on in order to uh, when teacher is teaching a child in holistically manner. So holistic education is basically a comprehensive approach to teaching where educators seek to address the emotional, social, ethical, academic needs of students in an integrated learning format. That means in holistic education, we are talking about the overall development of a child. We are not focused on a single subject knowledge. We are not uh, focused on the remedial classes for the slow learner and we are not uh, focused on the, a single concept here. In holistic education and overall development of a child we emphasis on in which contains the manners, hands-on lessons, the academics and the emotional development of a child, critical thinking and the skills, the abilities, character formation and health related terms and the conflict of the resolution skills. So overall development, development of a child is must taken care in holistic education. They basically emphasize is placed on positive school environments and providing whole child support services that support the academic and non-academic needs and also known as the wrap around support to the students. So the correct option for this question will be option number D, the outcome based education along with the value, value education. Hello everyone, this is question number 15. This question related to the logical reasoning and this is a memory based and very easy question. The question states that in Nyaya syllogism, all the three terms, there are three major terms in the Nyaya syllogism. One is middle, then major and the last one is the minor term. Stand synthesized in which of the following steps of inferential process. So inferential process is basically a process of analyzing the results and making the conclusions from data subjects to the random variation. Here inferential process which taken some steps and we need to know that which term stands synthesized in Nyai syllogism. So in Aristotelian syllogism, though connected by the middle term, major term and minor term, which I already told you there are three basic terms, middle, major and minor, which stand apart in the premises. In the Nyai syllogism, all the three terms stand synthesized in the open Nyai, that means the application. Here four terms has been given example, conclusion, application and reason. In the Aristotelian syllogism and in the Nyai syllogism, all the three terms which is and synthesized which already given in the question itself that is synthesized in the fourth proposition which is application so the correct option for this question will be option number C hello everyone this is question number 16 this question belong from research aptitude the question asks that which one of the following is a tool of grounded theory so grounded theory sets out to discover or construct theory from data systematically obtained and analyzed using comparative analysis. So by this definition, we understood that grounded theory will discover and construct the theory which get from the data and systematically obtained and analyzes this, this data on the basis of analysis in the manner of comparison. So continuously comparative analysis has been done in this research method like in grounded theory theory we took some data and we analyze on this data and find some conclusion on the basis of this data so continuously we are comparing on the basis of some facts or some basis of some analysis or systematic comparison is happened in this grounded theory so as you can see in the diagram as well in at first stage there is open coding in which we are constantly comparing we are taking the data with the help of the interviews and we are categorize this data on the basis of themes or the variables and then emerging these core cool things with together 
and the later on second stage again we are doing the comparison in which selective coding and we are doing the constant comparison then again we are taking the data by the interview and then we are densified and saturated these core categories and then again in the next step in the theoretical coding we are basically making the social process and at the conclude we are taking the theoretical model so overall in this method we are taking the data and we are analyzing this data in order to conclude some results here so in grounded theory what we have done is we are doing the constant comparison so the correct option for this question will be option number a hello everyone this is question number 17 this question belongs from teaching methodology in which two list has been given list one and list two list one having these uh, popular quotes and list two is having the name of the person so the first quote states that learning is an organization of behavior so this question is memory based and you must know these quotes are said by the which person basically so statement one says that learning is an organization of behavior so a quote number a says by the garrett so it will connect with the third in the list two so statement b says that learning is the change in behavior resulting from behavior so this one said by the gulford so B will connect with the first. So just check the option in which B is first. Here is only one option which is B is one. So we can eliminate the rest of the option here. Let's read the other options as well. Learning is selecting the appropriate response and connecting with the stimulus which is said by the Thorndike. So we can connect with C with the fourth option. Here in the last option, learning is a process of progressive behavior adaption, which is said by the Skinner. So D will connect with the second option. So here A connect with third, B connect with one and C connect with fourth and D connect with second. So the correct option for this question will be option number D. Hello everyone, this is question number 18. This question belongs from mathematical reasoning from number theory topic. The question asks that find the average of the squares of the consecutive odd numbers from 1 to 21. There are two ways to solve this question. One is a lengthy one, another one is a formula based solution. So let's check the how we can solve it when we don't know the formula here. So basically in the question they are asking about the consecutive odd numbers. There is range has been given from 1 to 21. You can easily write down the total number of odd numbers between 1 and 21 so here 1 is the odd number after 1 there is a 3 and then 5 7 9 and after 9 there is 11 13 15 17 19 and 21 because range is from 1 to 21 only and they are talking about the squares of these odd numbers so we can easily do the squares of these number by multiplying it by itself you can do the squares of these numbers so the square of 1 is 1, square of 3 is 9, square of 5 is 25, square is 7 is 49, square of 9 is 81, square of 11 it will equal to 121, square of 13 will equal to 169, square of 2 is equal to square of 15 is equal to 225, square of 17 is equal to 280. 9 and square of 19 is equals to 361 and square of 21 is equals to 441 and what they are doing this find the average how we can find out the average of numbers by taking the summation of these number divided by the total numbers so here the addition of these number will equals to 1771 we can divide by the total number just count the numbers here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so we can divide these number in order to find the average of these number so here 161 is the answer in the option we have the 161 now let's do it this the same question with the formula here the formula to find the average of the square of the consecutive odd numbers here the range is given here 21 the last number is 21 so we can say the value of n is 21 and the formula is n multiplied by n plus 2 divide by 3 so here put the value in the formula n equals to 21 you can say 21 in the bracket 21 plus 2 divide by 3 so 21 21 plus 2 that is 23 divide by 3 21 multiplied by 23 that is 483 and divide by 3 which is equal to 161 here you can see in the fourth line we can solve this lengthy question in just fourth line when we know the formula so the correct option for this question is option number b that is 161
Hello everyone, this is question number 19. This question belongs from teaching aptitude from Bloom taxonomy topic. The question states that which of the following levels of Bloom taxonomy is achieved by the road learning. So there is a, a level given which is road learning and we need to know that which level of the Bloom taxonomy we have achieved when a student is trying to learn the road learning. So Bloom taxonomy is a set of the three hierarchical models in which we use the classification of the educational learning on the basis of the complexity. At the first stage, at the first level, student is try to remember the things by the rote learning without the understanding the concept, without the understanding the logic behind the things. The student is basically just done the rote learning. So that that level is called the remembering. So in the level one, can learner or the learner recall or remember the information just by defining and duplicating the list, memorizing the things, recall and repeat the state. So we just uh, recalling again and again the same thing, and we just do the rote learning in the level one which is based on the remembering so the correct option for this question will be remembering so likewise there are other levels also in the bloom taxonomy there is understanding in which a learner is explain the ideas and the concept third one is the applying in which a learner use the information in the new way in analyzing phase learner is distinguished between the different parts and the evaluating the learner is justify the stand or the taking the decision by argumenting or defending or the judging selecting support values and evaluate so various parameters has been come in the level 5 in the level 6 that the learner creates a new product or maybe doing some invention or do something to construct the new thing or creating or designing or develop a new thing so from level 1 to level 6 there are the different parameters and the student learning on the basis of the complexity and the specificity so the correct option for this question will be option number a which is remembering Hello everyone, this is question number 20. This question belongs to water pollution. The question states that chlorine in drinking water is used for five options has been given and we need to identify that which one is used for the drinking water clear. So her first option is disinfection, removal of hardens, odor treatment, turbidity control and removal of iron and manganese. We need to choose the correct answer from the options given below. So here as we all know that chlorine is used for the treatment of the drinking water because it affects in killing, killing a large variety of microbial water pond and there are so many other advantage as well when we are adding the chlorine into the water because it uh, it will become the water to be drinkable so chlorinization chlorination is a process which is when we are adding the chlorine to the drinking water in order to kill the parasites and the bacteria and the other viruses as well so here option number one is clearly defined that we are disinfection the water here so option a has been correct so that those option which is excluding a we can eliminate that option so here option number d which is not include a we can eliminate this option and again chlorine is in drinking water is used for the odor treatment of the water we can include that option as well so here c option will be correct so those option who is not adding the c option we can eliminate that as well so here option c hands is also eliminate next chlorine is added a raw water to eliminate the algae and the other form of aquatic life from the water so they won't cause problem in later stages of water treatment so the correct option for this question will be option number a here so the correct option for this question will be a c e only Hello everyone, this is question number 21. This question belongs to mathematical reasoning from compound interest topic. The question states that at what percent of compound interest per annum a sum of money will double in 14 years? Let's suppose here time is n equals to 14. Let's take the value of time is n and n equals to 14 here. And they are talking about the compound interest in the uh, question. So here the formula of the compound interest is when we need to find out the total amount which we will get here after getting the compound interest. So here the what percent of compound interest basically we need to identify the rate of interest in the question and a sum of money. Let's suppose a sum of money will represent with the P and it will double. So after taking the compound interest over P we will get double of P so that is 2P. So what is the amount here formula of compound interest is amount equals to P in a bracket 1 plus R upon 100 and the uh, N here the power of N. Now putting the value of N here we will have the amount P at initial and we will get the 2P after that. So here I can write this like this 2P equals to P 
and we have 1 plus r upon 100 and to the power n here n equals to 14. So basically we need to calculate this by putting the values in the formula and we have get the value of r over here. So we can deduct this p from this p. So we have 2 equals to 1 plus r upon 100 to the power 14 here. So by taking the under root of this 14 to the right hand side we can write this formula as like this 14 under root 2 equals to and we have 1 plus r upon 100. So here I have after solving this equation we will have the 19.79 equals to 1 plus r upon 100 and by taking this value to the left hand side we will have 8.79 equals to 100 upon 18.79 equals to 5.3. So after solving this equations here we have the 18.79 equals to 1 plus r upon 100. So I can take this one to the other side and after deduct this we will get this. At initial we have the 19.79 here and then after taking this one to the other side and after deduct this one from the 19.79 we will have the 18.79 and we can divide it with the 100 and we will get the 5.3 here. In the question, I, we have the 4%, 5%, 6%, and 6.5%. So the correct option for this question will be option number B, which is 5%. Hello everyone, this is question number 22. This question belongs from ICT unit. So here in this question, two statement has been given, statement 1 and statement 2. Statement 1 is true or 2 is false and vice versa. We need to check that whether these two statements are true or whether these two statements are false. So uh, statement 1 state that cache memory is volatile memory which is true that cache memory is a volatile memory and is much slower than random access memory. Here in the question in statement 1 they are talking about two types of memory one is cache memory another one is random access memory. Here we know that cache memory is a volatile memory and RAM memory is also a volatile memory but which one is the fastest memory in both of them. So cache memory, which, so the memory which is very nearest to the processor, that memory is considered to be the fastest memory. Here according to the memory hierarchy, you can clear this concept with the help of this image over here that those memory which are very near to the processor here processor is this register is also the memory component here. So register is also fastest than the cache. So after register we have the cache memory which is near to the processor and then we have the main memory which is also called the random access memory. So as I already told you that the memory which is nearest to the processor is considered to be the fastest memory. Here in the comparison of the cache memory and random access memory you can clearly see that cache memory will gonna be the fastest memory as compared to the RAM memory or secondary memory. So statement one is false here because cache memory is volatile memory memory which is true but statement also says that cache memory is slower than random memory which is very opposite of it. Cache memory is the faster than the random access memory. So statement 1 is false here and the option which is considered the statement 1 is true we can eliminate that. Here option A can be eliminated and C can be eliminated. Let's check the another statement. Statement 2 says that CD, DVD and magnetic tapes. First of all these three units CD, DVD and magnetic tapes are the memory component and we can save our data in these drives. Our old optical media devices. Here optical media devices usually we divide the memory component into three categories. One is magnetic disc, another one is optical disc and last one is the flash memory. Here in the magnetic disc we have the hard disk and we have the floppy drives. In optical disc we have the CD, DVD and Blu-ray and in the flash memory we have pen drive and SD cards. So as you can see these three are the different categories which consist of the various memory devices or memory components here. Usually in the computer science memory divided into two types. Here one is primary another one is secondary. In the primary we have another divide into these categories ROM and RAM. RAM is further divided into programmable read only memory, erasable programmable read only memory, electrical erasable programmable read only memory and RAM is divided into further three kinds of like static RAM, dynamic RAM and cache. Secondary memory is divided into two types like disk drive and tape drives. In the disk drive we have the CD, hard disk and floppy. 
and cd rom we have again for the read only purpose and write only purpose and with the read and write purpose here so these two devices like magnetic tape and cd and dvd which is the part of the optical device are two different categories and they are saying that op they are uh, considered into the same optical media devices which is not true so statement 2 is here poles so we can say the both the statement in this question will be false. So the correct option for this question will be option number B. Hello everyone. This is question number 23. This question belongs to environment topic. The question states that two statement has been given one and two and we need to tell whether these two statements are true or false. One is true, another is false and vice versa. Statement one states that natural erosion of the soil is gradual removal of the top soil by natural process. By any natural process, it if it will affect the upper layer of the soil that comes under natural erosion or we can say soil erosion. So let's read more about the soil erosion. In the soil erosion, it will decrease the soil fertility, which can negatively affect the crop. It can also send the soil lead and water downstream and which can create the heavy layer of the sediment that prevents streams and rivers from flowing smoothly and can eventually lead to floating. By any natural means or by any natural process, if are the upper layer of the soil get affected and it will infertile and it will affect the production of the crops as well which comes under the natural erosion or soil erosion it will very true that statement one is true that due to natural process our soil get affected and it will lead to removal of the upper layer of the soil statement two states that accelerated erosion of the soil is caused due to man-made activities yes it may also one of the reason that soil erosion is the you caused by the man-made activities as well the next line in the statement 2 is says that the rate of accelerated erosion is equal to the rate of soil formation you know that if you can uh, soil erosion can be a process of one day only but soil formation is a very long process and it's a time taken process here so this is the example of the soil formation over time in the pictorial representation you can clearly see that at the first place there is a rock fragment and it will take that much amount of time and process in order to become the last product that is soil by combination of the various process over a plenty of time we can say that soil formation is very long process as compared to the soil erosion here so statement two is seems to be false here so the option which is the right here the statement one is true and statement two is false so the correct option for this question will be option number c hello everyone this is question number 24 this question belong to environment in this question two list has been given list one and list two list one contains the name of the protocol and the summit and list two contain their themes so there has been some protocols and the summit or the meeting name here and every meeting and every summit is based on any anything so there is a particular theme for any summit so this is a memory based question and we need to know the which theme is associate with which summit here four option has been given and we need to identify which theme is consist with the uh, which associate with which summit so here option one says that paris agreement which associate with the indc theme so the a will connect with the third one so here B is Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto Protocol is associated with the emission trading. So the theme is related like one, this which is emission trading. Here C, which is Rio Declaration Protocol or Rio Declaration Summit, we can say. And this and the theme of Rio Declaration will be environment and development. So there is nothing need to be uh, understand. There is no logic behind this. We, this is just a memory based question. We need to know the names of their themes and their summit as well. So the last option is Montreal Protocol and the theme associated with this Montreal Protocol is ozone depletion. So D is connect with the two. So the option which contain these options that is three, that is C. So the correct option for this question will be option number C. Hello everyone, this is question number 25. This question belong from communication. The question state that communication apprehension is often described as four option has been given and we need to know what is a communication apprehension. First of all, we need to know what is a communication where two people share their thoughts with each other. A successful communication is what when both peoples who are 
इन्वॉल्व इन ए कम्युनिकेशन अंडरस्टैंड ईच अदर थिंग्स वट ए पर्सन ए इज सेंग टू पर्सन बी दैट पर्सन बी इज अंडरस्टैंड एंड पर्सन बी वॉट सेंग्स विद द पर्सन ए पर्सन ए कैन अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ए कम्युनिकेशन वेन टू पीपल कम्युनिकेट वैन दे आर शेयरिंग देयर थॉट्स this is called the communication so and communication can be happened like one to one and one to many a person can speak to many people at once time in order to he, can, he or she can give the speech so this is how communication process works now what does that mean communication apprehension means communication apprehension is a kind of we can say it is a measure technique or it is a measure of the degree of the anxiety it's not about that when a person is speak to the other person so the person is confident enough so that he that person can speak to the multiple peoples at one time like this person can give this speech so there are so many factors associate with a person communication abilities so here communication apprehension is a measure for the degree of anxiety so maybe this person is not confident enough so that this person can give speech to the many people or even can communicate with the single person there can be many major effect so here anxiety when someone's may feel in response to real communication with another person or the people say there are many kind of communication apprehension which is called group discussion a person is not able to discuss in a group or a, pub, a person is not able to uh, or he or she is not good in the public speaking a person is not even able or even not even familiar or even not confident enough to communicate one to one or even formal meeting a person can feel this anxiety so overall when i told so many things or even a single entity if i use for all this process i can say that person might face this social anxiety i can describe this all things into a single terms which is social anxiety so the correct option for this is option number c hello everyone this is question number 26 this question belong from communication and elements of communication topic so this question states that human communication involves i already explained you the terms communication in the previous video communication is basically when two people communicate with each other in order to share their thoughts with each other in any language the language which understand by the both people who involved in a communication so human communication what are the major elements in a communication in a human communication there must be a message which has to be sent from one place to another very first element in any communication what are you trying to convey and what are the thoughts that can be in the form of anything like in the image sound audio video anything it could be but the major term which we can use that is a message a message which has to be shared between two people so there is a message transmission which is very necessary for any communication if a person is sending a message from let's suppose this is a person a and having a message for the person b this is a person b if person a is sending this message to the person b so here the first term which is the message transmission so we need to identify the correct answer from the options below below this there are saying that we need to understand the which terms is include in the communication so message transmission which is very necessary so we can take this option a so those options who exclude this a we can directly eliminate that this question is very basic and you can do this by the common sense only here the option b says that message reception if a person is sending a message towards the person b let's suppose there is a person a and sending a message don't know where he is sending this is not a effective communication we are not saying this is a communication over here whenever a person is sending a message there has to be a receiver who is going to receive this message so this is called a perfect communication so message reception is also necessary in the communication so we can say a b is also right here you can observe that option b is not include the b option option d is not include the message reception b option we can exclude this as well let's understand the third one which is verbal and non verbal messages yes there can be message message can be any type of it can be verbal or it can be non verbal so a message type is not matter here it could be verbal or non verbal so 
C will not will be involved in a human communication. Next is power packed message only. No, there are so many messages also which is not powerful enough or we this is not like every time we are communicate with each other we have to be talk about the powerful topics, isn't it? So we are not including this in a human communication which is not necessity all the time. Message for non-consumption here I am talking about this similarly whenever a person is trying to send a message there has to be a receiver without receiver there is no means of the communication which is of no use so e can be eliminated here so the correct option for this question will be option number a which is a b c only hello everyone this is question number 27 this question belong from data interpretation the table is given here the following table shown the percentage distribution of the total number of the students and total number of the girls here total number of student is given and total number of girls has been given in the six colleges colleges are a b c d e and f the total number of students and girls studying in all the colleges together are 60000 here the total student strength is given 60000 and the total girls strength which studied in all the college that is 24000 based on the data in the table answer the questions college wise distribution of the students so we have this data and we know the total number of students we know the total number of girls and we have some percentage of these students in this number of colleges a b c up to f so the first question on the basis of this data is the ratio of the number of boys here we need to know the number of boys in college f and number of the boys in the college d but in the table there is no data about the boys so we need to identify that how much data is there for the boys just by looking at this table we know that total number of students is 60,000 and total number of girls is here 24,000 we can say the total number of boys will be 60,000 minus 24,000 that is 36,000 these 36,000 is the total number of boys in all the colleges in A, B, C, D, E and F. So we can find out the total number of boys in the various colleges individually on the basis of this percentage. Let's write down the percentage one by one here. Here the 10%. So 10% is the total student from the 60,000 in the A college. So the 10% of 60,000 will be around 6,000. Here the 15% of 24,000 that is 3600. Here we know that in college A total number of student is 6000 and in which 3600 are the girls. How many students remaining those are the boys. So 2400 remaining this is the value of the total number of boys in college A. Likewise, we can do the following percentage values. Here 9% of 60,000 will be 5400 and 23% of the 60,000 which is 13,800 I will write you can calculate the percentage here how we can calculate like 60,000 if you need to find out the 9% of 60,000 you can write like this 60,000 60, divide by 100 multiply by 9 you can cut 20 with 20 and multiply it you will get the 5400 which is I write here in the B college 18% of 60,000 that is 10,800 and 16% of the 60,000 that is 9,600 and similarly 24% of 60,000 which is 14,400 and similarly find out the 12% of the 24,000 that is 2,880 and next 18% of the 24,000 I am doing this because in the question you may do on the basis of this question given here for the sake of your clarification I am doing this in detail. So the 14% of the 24,000 that is 3360 and 20% of 24,000 that is 4800 and likewise 21% of the 24, 24,000 which is 540. And you can find out the number of boys here by deducting this value, deducting the girls value from the total number of student. So the total number of boys in the college B will be 5400 minus 2880 which is around 2520. Similarly in the college C the total number of boys will be to total number of student minus total number of girls we have. So it will around 9480. 
in the college d the total number of student in the boys that is 7440 in the college e the strength of boys is 4800 in the college f the strength of college boys is 9360 so let's understand the question the question asked me that the ratio of the total number of boys in college f in the college f total number of boys here 9360 i can write here and they are asking about the ratio so in the total number of boys in the college d here this is a college d and total number of boys in college d will be 7440 you can divide it and you can get the ratio by the dividing with the two i will get the 936 and by dividing the 00, 0 and then I will have the 372 by dividing it with the 12 you can get the so here the ratio between these is 39 ratio 31 so the correct option for this question will be option number B hello everyone this is question number 28 and this question is also based on the table given below I already teach you how to calculate these values in the previous video so in this question they are talking about the number of girls in college F here we have the college F and number of girls in college F is 14,400 more than the number of girls in college A so here a college A and number of girls oh this is the total number of students and total number of students and total number of girls in college F that is 5,040 and in college A total number of girls that is 3,600 here the college A, these are the total number of students, 6000 and from 6000 there is 3600 that is girls. So we need to know that number of girls in college F, the what percent is more than? We have to take the, uh, the difference between these. So 0, 4, 4 and 1. So we need to know that what percent of this on the, tape, on the uh, college A. So here the percentage we can find out by like this 1440 divided by 3600 multiplied by 100. So you can calculate like this and it will around 40%. So the correct option for this question will be option number C. Hello everyone, this is question number 29. This question is belong to data interpretation topic. You need to check the previous video to know the, how we can calculate these values, how we can find out the percentage of this total number of values and how we can calculate the, all the missing values over here. So this question asks for the, the difference between the number of boys and number of girls studying in college D. They are talking about only one college here. The college D is here and total number of students in D that is 10,800. So the total number of boys in college D that is 7440 and the total number of girls in college D that is 3360 and basically they are asking the difference between these so we can find the difference by subtracting the values 3360 from the 7440 which is around 4080 so the correct option for this question will be option number B Hello everyone, this is question number 30. This question is from DI, data interpretation and on the basis of this table, we need to know the answer of this question. The question states that the average of number of boys turning in college A, B, C. So here three colleges are A, B, C and they are asking about the average of the total number of boys in these particular colleges here. So in college A, total number of boys in college A that is 2400. And in college B, total number of boys 2520. Just by looking at the values in the table, you can answer these questions very easily. So in the uh, college C, the total number of boys here 9480. And how we can calculate the average of the numbers? Summation of n divided by total number of n. We have to take the summation of these values, which is around 14400. 14,400 and how we can find the average of this value by dividing the total number of items here 1, 2, 3 we can divide it with the 3 and we will get the 4,800. So the correct option for this question will be option number D. 
Hello everyone, this is question number 31. This is the last question on the basis of this table. This types of questions belong from DI topic. So in this question, they are asking about the total number of girls students studying in college C. Here the college C and total number of students which are girls in this C that is around 4320. In the table, I have already written the values. So see as the percentage the number of boys studying in the college E here the college E and total number of boys in college E that is 4800. So we need to know this uh, we, first of all we have to check the percentage. So they are asking about basically the college C total number of girls in college C which is this 4320 as a percentage of the number of boys studying in the college E number of boys in college e that is 4800 so basically they are asking about the percentage here we can easily find out by multiplying divided by the total number of boys 4800 multiplied by 100 by solving this we will get the around 90 percent here so the correct option for this question will be option number d Hello everyone, this is question number 32. This question belongs from ICT unit and this is question is based on the Excel formulas. Although some of the net questions which are based on the ICT are very basic and this question took some intuition on the formulas which we have used in the Excel. So as we all know that every formula in Excel start from the equal sign and we usually apply this formula by double clicking or by tapping on the any uh, column here or any value of the row here this is called the one cell of the excel sheet let's assume this is excel sheet here the number of columns we have by the name a b c d we have the row like 1 2 3 and 4 we have given some values and in the question they are saying that which of the following formula four formulas has been given in the options should be entered in the cell d1 which cell is d1 here so d that means this is the d and d1 is this entire column states that this is the d column these are the values in d column and one state that first row d column so that means this 50 so what formula they are asking we need to put here so that when it's copied into the d2 d2 is this and this is d3 and which formula we need to apply in D1 that when we copied that formula in D2 and D3 as well, it gives the correct value as shown in the range D1 and D3. So here the correct option for this question will be option number D. Here we are applying the dollar sign. Dollar is basically used as a reference in the excel it works as a reference module here so reference we can lock any row and column in excel by using this dollar sign so we can lock any column or we can lock any row by the its numbers here so the correct option for this question that is d where we are locking the row and column and multiplying it with the another column and row you can use it and in the you can take it as the input and use in the uh, on the practical you can do it on your own by applying this formula in any uh, cell in the excel so what exactly this dollar sign is dollar sign in excel as i told you that it is a cell reference which affect just one thing it instruct the excels which instruction is given to the excel that how to treat this reference when this formula they are talking about the moving of the formula from this cell to the another cell they are copying this formula of one cell into another so dollar signs checks that before the row and the column that makes a coordinate and app absolute cell reference that will not be changed without the dollar sign the reference and relative it will change so if you are locking that's why i have used the word lock where i can lock the column and where i can lock the row when i use this with the help of this dollar that means the formula has been locked and you can reference it into the another cell as well here the practical representation here that absolute column and relative row that means when we are applying the dollar before a that means we are locking the column here and row can be changed and relative columns and absolute row where we are applying the dollar before the row so here row is locked and column could be changed here so the correct option for this question is option number d 
Hello everyone, this is question number 33. This questions belong from higher education. And the question states that given the two statements, statement 1 and statement 2, we need to tell that whether these two statements are true or false. One is true, another is false and vice versa. Statement 1 states that the national education policy, in short, we can say that NEP 2020 envisages that the extent 10 plus 2 structure in school educations. This policy is based on the school education's policy and makes a structure how students can learn in schools. What policy is it? Will be modified with the new pedagogical and curricular re restructuring of 5443 covering ages 3 to 18. Here few things is right about statement 1 but few things which is incorrect in this. NEP 2020 is, yeah, it is very right that it is on the basis of the school educations. It is, it is related with that. Along with that, it is on the basis of 10 plus 2 structure. That is also correct. It is a new curriculum restructuring, which is very true. And the age is 3 to 18. That is again true. But the structure here, 5443, it is incorrect. Instead of 5443, it is 5334. What does that mean? The five years, the initial five years of a child in which that two years, which is class one and two from the age six to eight. And before that, for the three years from the age of three to six year. So combined, there is five years. After this five years and this stage is called the foundational stage of a child. Now, next three years will be called the preparatory state, which is from class 3 to 5th and age is here from 8 to 11 years. Again, after this stage, there is stage called middle, which is from class 6 to 8 and the age of the student will be from 11 to 14 years. It is of again 3 years. That means the middle age or the middle level will be of 3 years. After middle level, there is a called secondary level, which is of four years and the classes in this from 9 to 12 and the students age will be from 14 years to 18 years. So this is the actual structure which is proposed in NEP 2020. So which is 5334 instead of 5443. Hence, we can say that statement one is false here. And I got this data from the official website of NEP 2020. You can get this in the PDF. I have taken the snapshot of this, that PDF in order to make clarification about this question. Here statement 2 states that the NEP 2020 envisages that prior to the age of 5, every child will move a preparatory class. Here you will see that after 5 years, there is a level called preparatory class or we can say the Bal Vatika, which has an ECCE qualified teacher in the light and this statement is true. We can say that statement 1 is false and 2 is correct. So the option which is uh, I think option number D would be correct here because statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct here. Hello everyone this is question number 34. This question belongs to higher education and politics. The question state that the NEP 2020 has recommended the replacement of the UGC by an umbrella organization. The Higher Education Commission of India which is HECI with its four verticals namely. It is a memory based question. In this question they are just asked that what is the name of the four verticals which is comes under HECI. Here with the help of this diagram you can see these are the four verticals which comes under this scheme. Here one, two, three and four. What is the full form of this? They are simply giving you the full form and we need to identify them which are the four verticals. So here first it, it is National Higher Education Regulatory Council. Here it is NHERC. It is for the common single point regulator for the higher education sector. So A will be correct and those who does not contain it as the right answer we can eliminate that option. Here you can eliminate the option B. Now next is General Education Council. Here it is General Education Council which is used to frame the expected learning outcomes characteristics of a particular degree. So here B will be correct. 
so in the uh, remaining options you can eliminate the option number c because it does not include b as a right vertical here c says that medical council of india so medical council of india is not a vertical which is comes under heci so we can deduct that so d will not be the right choice so here which is c medical council of india will not be the right vertical so we can eliminate c so and next we have the higher education grants council so higher education ground council which is hegc which is used for the funding and financing of higher education based on transparent criteria so these are the four verticals which is comes under higher education commission of india you may remember this with the help of this diagram so the correct option for this question will be option number d Hello everyone this is question number 35 this question belongs to communication this question states that which of the logical informal fallacy is committed in the following argument here a sentence is has been given here a couple of sentences is there and we need to know that which fallacy comes under here there is a argument and is in the question they are saying that logical informal fallacy and for fallacy can be divided into two types one is formal another one is informal fallacy so what does that mean informal fallacies are the incorrect argument we can say in the natural language when we are communicating with the other people and we are using some arguments which are not related with each other or like multiple arguments we are given when we are talking with the other person and those are illogical there is no connection between those sentences that comes under informal fallacies or we can say they are the incorrect arguments in the natural language they are caused by the content and the context of an argument and not and are not necessarily due to the form of the argument because these are the sentences which i am talking with someone and i am saying some things which are not necessary to say in a ongoing argument so that that comes under informal fallacies informal fallacies are very different from the formal fallacies which are flaws in the structure of a deductive argument and rather than the argument invalid the final conclusion will be that your entire argument will be invalid when you are using the invalid or you can say informal fallacies so that things comes under which category let's understand the what in the question what arguments is there like mr x is used abusive language towards a child who threw a stone at his car this is one sentence since child abuse is a crime here there is no need to add this one more sentence since child abuse is a crime he should be reported to the authorities did you observe there is no link between the multiple sentences into this argument because there is a topic is very different and you are adding one unrelated sentence into the ongoing argument so this comes under equivocation so the correct option for this question will be option number c equivocation in general we can say equivocation comes under informal fallacy which is one thing that means illogical part of the argument that lies within the argument is applied rather than the structure of the argument itself that also mean of the equivocation so the correct option will be option number c Hello everyone this is question number 36 this questions belong from higher education and politics and the topic comes which is sustainable development the question states that which goal of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development adopted by india in 2015 seeks to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all so under this scheme or under this agenda there are multiple goals and they are specifically asking about the the theme which is ensure inclusive and equitable quality on the quality education which goal which is specifically mentioned in 2030 agenda for the sustainable development and that adopted by the india in 2050 so there are total 15 to 17 goals on the different you can say with the uh, different objectives is there sustainable development goal in 2015 or the global goals which are collection of the total 17 interlinked objectives designed for serve as a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for the people and the planet now and into the future 
So here the correct option for this question will be goal number four, which is B. Although this is a memory based question, just take a look from 1 to 17 goals. What are they in the question? In the next paper, they might ask with the another uh, question, with the another theme and you have to tell that which goal they are talking about. So here I got this snapshot from the official website of the sustainable development goals. So here are the total 17 goals which they were talking about in which goal number one is talk about the no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three will be on the base of good health and well being. In the fourth, which is quality education, our question is on the basis of this goal. Goal number four. Here, five is gender equality, six is clean water and sanitation. And seven is based on the affordable and clean energy. You can take the snapshot of this slide and just take a look of the every goal over here from one to 17. So that's all the correct option for this question will be goal number four, which is on quality education. Hello everyone. This is question number 37. This question belongs to communication. Here the two list has been given list one and list two. We have to match this list is list one contains the communication context and list two contains its related factor here communication context are physical cultural social and psychological and temporal and the related factors are group norm sequential tangible and value system here question like this type you can do with the help of you know by observing these values here option a says that physical and the just read the related factors here group norms sequential positioning here a word called tangible environment tangible means what tangible which is we can touch and feel and intangible which cannot be touched so here physical means which is anyhow uh, possible that it physical communication that was which is based on the tangible environment could be there so a can relate with the three so the option which consists of this combination here a contained with three so here option b will be the right answer no matter what are the other options here if you are very sure about one option you can do the matching questions like this let's read the another b here cultural cultural means what cultural here the values and ethics and sentiments of the peoples included over here so cultural can relate with the fourth option which is value system here b relate with fourth Next C is social and psychological. You know the social communication you can do when you are in the group. A single person cannot, if a single person is, you know, saying anything and you cannot count it as the communication or a social communication. It should be social communication must be in the groups where more than one and two people are communicate with each other. Here social and psychology, so C could be connected with the one. Here C is connected with one and remaining D will connect with the two, which is sequential positioning. So the correct option for this question will be option number B. Hello everyone, this is question number 38. This question belongs to ICT and from number system topic. In the question, it states that which of the following three numbers from A to C in decimal, octal and hexadecimal, these are the number A, B and C and the numbers are base 10 that means decimal, base 8 that means octal number and base 16 means hexadecimal number and the notation respectively are equivalent to this. This when base 2 that means binary number here this is a binary number let's write it here 1101001 base 2 that means binary number in number system num the number system is number divided into four types one is binary in which only two numbers 0 and 1 that is that's why base is 2 octal numbers is between 0 and 7 base is 8 so total 8 numbers in decimal number is between 0 to 9 total 10 so the base is 10 and hexadecimal number is between 0 to 9 from a to f total 16 number so base is 16 here those students who are not from computer science department computer science field may face the problem solving such questions so just observe here how we can convert these numbers basically they are asking about when we are converting these three given numbers into its equivalent binary is it equals to this or not basically the question is this now let's convert these number into binary one by one how we can convert a decimal number into binary by dividing this decimal number with the two and write its remainder here 
so 2 when divide by 217 we will get the 108 and remainder is 1 again divide it with the 2 and we will get remainder 0 again divide it with 2 and we will get remainder 0 likewise we can divide this number further with the 2 and write the remainder here here remainder is 1 again divide the 13 with the 2 we will get the remainder 1 divide the 6 with the 2 we will get remainder here and again 2 1 and this remainder here 1 and write this number into upwards direction here the number will 1101001 and you can see this number is equivalent to the number which is given in the quotient so a is seems to be very right that it is equals to the binary number given here so those option who does not contain a we can eliminate that option so option b can directly eliminate here by to do the time save in the quotient just do there here a is right let's check the b and c only whether these b and c one of them is correct then we will uh, we will answer this question accordingly now let's check the c option which is D9 and base is 16 here a table is given here decimal number and its binary and hexadecimal number is there so D is equivalent to the binary here is the D and its binary equivalent is 1101 and 9 is there 9 is there and its equivalent is 1001 and you can see that this is equals to the given number so you can see that the c option is also right so those who does not contain c we can eliminate that as well so option a and c will be directly eliminate here sorry option c yeah a and c so the option d will be the right answer how we can construct this table here take the 4 0 at initial and by adding the 1 into this will be the next number one again add the one in the binary addition basically what we have do is when we are adding zero plus zero we will get zero when add the zero plus one we will get one one plus zero we will get one and one plus one we will get zero and carry one so likewise we can add the one one into this and get these values from zero to nine and from a to f so the correct option for this question will be option number d a and c will be the right Hello everyone, this is question number 39. This question is long from mathematical reasoning from ratio and proportional topic. The question states that two numbers are in the ratio 7 ratio 8. If the difference between the numbers is 30, then find the numbers. So very first approach which you can follow while solving such questions is elimination method. Here the difference between the number is 30. Find out a number which difference is not 30. Here by observing all the fourth option, we analyze that all the numbers having a difference of 30 here. Again 205, 235 difference is 30, difference 30 and 30 as well. What is the next approach by solving this question? Here is the ratio given 7 ratio 8. And by dividing these numbers to 45, if we get the 7 upon 8, that is 7 ratio 8, that option will be the correct here. Let's divide 1 by 1 here. Here 215 divide by 245 and we can divide these numbers with the 5 we will get 43 here and 49 here this number is not right we can eliminate this next we have 205 divided by 235 we can eliminate this with the 5 it will not get the right so we can eliminate that as well we can divide the 210 divided by 240 and you can see you can you can divide it with the 3 like 3, 7, the 21 and 3, 8, the 24 here, the ratio is 7, ratio 8. And that's the question states that 7, ratio 8 will be in the numbers and their difference is 30. So the correct option for this question will be option number D. Hello everyone, this is question number 40. This question belongs from mathematical reasoning. Two shopkeepers A and B sell certain kind of machines at the same list price. However, shopkeeper A allows two successive discount, 20% and 15% and B allows 10% and 20%, 25% discount. Which statement is correct? So let's assume here is not the price given. The item, let's suppose here is the item X and the price of that item is 100 and shopkeeper A which gives 20% and after 20% it will give 15% discount and shopkeeper B gives 10% and 25% respectively. So if a item is of 100 is its price and after 20% discount the amount will, will reduce to 80 
because after 20% it will reduce the 20 and then on this 80 the shopkeeper A gives 15% more discount so 80 divided by 100 into 15 which is around 12 we can deduct this 12 from 80 and that 68 is the final amount so the price of item X is 100 but shopkeeper A gives two discounts so the final amount of that price that item will be 68 so let's check in terms of the shopkeeper B which gives 10% discount initially it will reduce the minus 10 that will become 90 and again give 25% so 90 divided by 100 multiplied by 25 it will be around 22.5 so 90 minus 22.5 it is equals to 6 67.5 hence 67.5 is less than 68 we can see that b offers more discount here in option a offers more discount no b offers more discount yes and both a b offer same discount no a offer 35 percent discount b offers 30 discount that will be not the correct option here the correct option for this question will be option number b Hello everyone, this is 41 question and this question belongs to higher education and politics topic. The question asks that Indira Gandhi National Open University was established in the year. This is a fact based question. You just need to remember the university establishment year is what. So Indira Gandhi National Open University usually we call it the IGNU. I N G N O U. The IGNU established by the Act of Parliament in 1985. So, correct option for this question will be option number C. And it, this university has continuously striven to build an inclusive knowledge society through inclusive education. So, in this question, there is nothing much about it. They just ask the year in which IGNU established. So, that is 1985. Hello everyone, this is question number 42. This question belongs to teaching methodology. The question state that which of the following is a group centered method of teaching learning. See, there are certain ways to teach the students. There are various methods a teacher used to teach the students. Here four options has been given and in which the teacher used group centered method. That teaching method is called. So we need to find that answer. Here providing lectures notes, you know, providing the lecture notes or recommending the any books to the students to go and learn on by on. So this is not the right way of teaching and still it is not the right option for this question as well. Next is team teaching where you are making the team including various students here. here more than one student is there and they are making a team and every team having a team leader and you are just giving a lecture to a team particularly so here team teaching will not be right answer because they are talking about the group centered method next is a demonstration method i have teach demonstration method in which i am using a demo to teach a particular topic here a teacher is here and use a demo to teach the students so demonstration method is not a t group centered method so the correct option for this question is brainstorming so what is brainstorming let's read more about it brainstorming is a method in which the teacher provides a problem to the student here is a group of students and teachers is given a problem to these groups let's suppose there are two groups one and to and multiple students are there and a teacher is given a problem to both the groups and if in the group members they are talking about this problem and try to resolve this problem the teacher writes all the ideas on the blackboard at last the appropriate solution to this problem is found out by the healthy discussion between the teacher and the student based on the expressed idea there is a problem written on the board and students is making the team and now discussion is going on on the basis of this problem and try to resolve this problem. This is called brainstorming method. So the correct option will be option number D. Hello everyone. This is question number 43. This question belongs to communication. The question state that the grapevine communication is often driven by. Grapevine communication is a type of informal social interaction. See in a formal communication let's suppose let's take an example of the presentation which is held in an office and which they have used the formal communication here they just tell all the rules and regulation or or upcoming project they are talking about 
or and they have shared the information in the formally manner so after a task is assigned to a group in a company that within that group how the peoples is communicate so that communication called the grapevine communication it is associated with the social interaction between the uh, at in the workplace you can say the employee interact with each other using the grapevine communication this type of communication focus on how professionals share their information if you are a manager or a team leader in your workplace it is helpful to recognize the type of grapevine communication which is occurring within the company so the correct option will be the social network of the employee which happened in the workplace Hello everyone this is question number 44 this questions belong from logical reasoning from the preposition logic topic the question state that two statement has been given one and two and we need to tell whether these two statements are true or false one is true another is false and vice versa let's read statement one statement one states that to form a contrapositive of a given proposition we replace its subject term with the complement of its predicate term and we replace its predicate term with the complement of its subject term so what is a proposition proposition is a statement in which there is only two values whether that statement is true and false there is nothing between these so what is the meaning of contrapositive of a given proposition let's suppose there is a condition given then whether this condition will happen it will lead to the another condition let's p propose to the q statement so make a table of it whether these two statements having four combination whether this happen and this will not this will not happen and this will happen so likewise we have total four combination when we are taking the two statements and one statement is lead to the another statement so what is the contrapositive of this two statements we can take complement of the each value and it will become the note p which implies to the note q here so what is the uh, value of the table here when we have the four combination of the p and q here p and q and where is p implies the q here and for we have the we have the note p implies note q over here so what is the combination is one is false false then we have the false true true false and true true so let's take an example of the real life statement on the basis of the real life examples and then we will understand this so let's p let's suppose that statement under p will be if you study so statement 1 says that if you study and statement q says that you will pass so here statement 1 p is false here that means you have not studied and you get fail so that statement is true in the next statement in f that if you don't study you will get passed there is a possibility then this statement will also true you get uh, you will study but you get fail so this statement seems to be false here because the first condition says that if you study you will pass it was the universal truth here but if a student is studied if a student done his homework or if he is done prepared for the exam still that student get fail that means this proposition will be leads to the false condition here a student is study and then he will get pass that's also true likewise we have the four combination in this implication and it's uh, the likewise it's having the contrapositive of the given combination as well in here as well well written on the basis of this statements over here so statement 1 is seems to be true here that we are taking the complement of these numbers and then we are calculating what would be the leads of the next statement would be so statement 1 seems to be true and in which option statement 1 is getting false we can eliminate that statement 1 uh, is false here in the d option we can eliminate and b option as well now next is all contrapositive positions are valid no there may be invalid and valid both are the statement here so there is not only single valid conditions here there are invalid conditions is also there so this statement is seems to be false here so the correct option for this question will be option number c which is statement 1 is true and 2 is false hello everyone this is question number 45 this questions belongs to ict topic the question state that which indian act makes it illegal to knowingly spread a computer virus so this is a memory based question and we need to know which which act talk about this knowingly spread a computer virus so the correct option for this question will be which is it act 2000 let's read more information about this act so it act 2000 is also known as information technology act and it's an act which is proposed by the indian parliament 
Parliament report on the 17th October 2000. So the IT Act is based on the UN model law on electronic commerce, which is 1996. And it is the most important law in India which deal with the cybercrime and e-commerce. E-commerce stands for electronic commerce here. The crime in which a computer is involved which is connected with any network is comes under cybercrime. The main objective was this act to carry lawful and trustworthy electronic, digital and online transaction that allowed or reduced cyber crimes. The IT Act has 13 chapters, so there, there is total 13 chapters and total 90 sections in this act. The last four sections that start from section 91 to 94, that is deal with the revision in the Indian Penal Code, which is 1860. So in short, ITX, which is 2000 Act, and it is related with the cyber crime in which total 13 section and 13 chapters and 90 sections here. This is all about the IT Act 2000. So the correct option will be option number C. Hello everyone, this is question number 46. This questions belong from reading comprehension and it, there is a paragraph has been given and we need to know what questions is on the basis of this and we will answer accordingly. So just take your time and read this entire paragraph line by line and on the basis of this paragraph we are going to answer four to five following questions here. So the first question on the basis of this paragraph will be the language of the conqueror was used in. So the right approach of solving such question is find out the keywords which is given in the question and in the options as well. So and the and the word which you get from the paragraph which is matched with the question and the options just read the entire line in order to understand the meaning of the question and what will be the right option for that question. So here the question and and the keyword in the question will be the language of the conqueror was used in. So here in the third line, did you observe that a language which is introduced by the conquerors? Here the which language is which is used by this. So next read that who became a ruling and landed elite. Did you observe that in the option there is also given that ruling and landed elite in the first place? If a student is not read the entire line will directly mark this option as the right answer. But this is not the right approach of solving such questions. Just read the entire line and understand the meaning of this line and what question is exactly about. So they are basically asking about the language which is used by the conqueror here. In the end of this line, it's written here that would be used in commerce and administration of law. So in the second option is given that the administration of the law, if they given just simple commerce what it will be the right answer because in the sentence they has clearly mentioned that the language which is used by the conquerors would, would used in commerce and the administration and law. So the right option for this question will be option number B. Hello everyone, this is the 47th question of this question paper and this is the second question on the basis of this paragraph here. The question state that historically minority languages were used the basis of four options has been given and in the second line in the paragraph did you observe that there is written that a language which is spoken by the small minority and the, in the question they are asking about the minority languages which are basis of the minority language here such as the latin in medieval europe they are again giving the examples of the minority language in the different era here so could become the medium of the scholarship of record keeping and of the religious ceremony so the right option of this question will be scholarship because in the option they have given the option as a scholarship here so the correct option for this question will be option number c Hello everyone, this is question number 48 and this is the third question on the base of this paragraph. So in the question state that one of the characteristics of the language is four option has been given and in which we need to identify that which one is the characteristics of the language here. In the second half of the paragraph, it is written here that words are symbols of human experience and perception underlying that they have undergone change over time. They are talking about the language meaning that the words which is used in a language language will change over the time and their meaning as well and in response of the new situations that means that all languages are in a state of the change sometimes the gradual change sometimes rapid change and they respond to new needs arising from developments in thought and knowledge 
so conclusion of the overall this lines are that the language character one of the language characteristics is that it will change in the meaning of the words will change in the constant time or sometime it's may be rapidly sometime it's gradually changes in the meaning of the words here so the right option for this question will be option number a which is written here that constant change in the meaning of the words Hello everyone, this is question number 49 and this is the question, this is the fourth question on the basis of this paragraph here. The question states that imperialism was responsible for. You can answer such questions if you know the general meaning of imperialism is what. Imperialism is basically when one country is rule another country here. Let's take an example. Let's suppose there is a country named A and there is a country named B. If one, if country A is imperialism on the country B, what would be the negative impact of on the country B will be. So country A will do its rules and regulation on the basis of the, its own country and it will not follow the rules and the law of the country B. It will apply their rules and regulation and the, what would be the impact on the tradition, on the custom and the culture of the country B? It will be negatively impact if one country is forcefully imperialism on the another country. So which is very true and in the paragraph itself it is given that if, in, if a country like here from this you can read during the era of the imperialism. So the language that means the language of A of the colonial power become the language of the administration. So the language which is used in country A will become the language used in B in the terms of the administration language will become the confidite lords and higher education science and technology in every era they will use their tradition their language in the another country as well so what will be the negative impact which put on the country B it will be confidication of law that will be not the accurate answer racial equ equity that will not be accurate answer on the basis of this paragraph we could say that it will exclude the old language here the older language exclude from these pairs so in the entire paragraph they were talking about the language the answer should be same in that domain only so the right option of this question will be that the in country b the exclusion of the old language is one of the impact which put when country a will imperialize the on the country b here so the right option for this question will be option number d Hello everyone, this is question number 50 and this is the last question on the basis of this paragraph. The question states that the passage analyzes languages as A. So in the last line of this paragraph, did you observe that the process remind us that language is not, so read carefully that it is written that language is not a corpse of learning. If you are in a hurry and you just match the keywords from the option and in the paragraph, you may be mistaken because in the option, it is written that corpse of learning. But in the it is paragraph, it is clearly written that a language is not a corpse of learning. So option A will not be the right answer but an instrument adapted to human purposes that the passage analyzed that language will be used as an instrument which is adapted to the human purposes or the correct option will be tool to meet the human purposes here it is written here so the right option for this question will be option number c here